Coming up on City Spotlight, it's part two of Charleston and Mattoon in focus with the mayor of Charleston, Brandon Combs, Charleston City Manager, Scott Smith, Mattoon Mayor, Tim Gover, and Mattoon City Administrator, Kyle Gill. We will discuss higher education in Coles County, what resources are shared between the two communities, and a look into the future of Charleston and Mattoon and what they could be together. That's all next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Start off with higher education in Coles County. And uh, just this past Friday, we had some uh, legislation go through with a, with a bill that uh, was nearly unanimous. And uh, Governor Rauner said that he would sign it and he kept that promise just today, uh, this final Monday in April here, um, and it will kind of help uh, public universities and colleges here for a little bit. And uh, uh, President Glassman was uh, on one of our radio programs on Hit Mix uh, 88.9 WEIU, and uh, it's just the first step moving forward. Um, your guys' reaction to this bill pa passing, it, it affects Eastern Illinois University and Lakeland College. Well, I think it's obviously great that we got some some funding. Um, I still would like to see a budget so that this isn't something that we have to go through again. But once again, looking on the positive side of things, at least uh, at least some money is coming in this, you know, to the universities and to Lakeland. That and looks like progress may be being made in Springfield, and maybe eventually we will get a uh, budget. So it's it's a movement in the right direction, mm -hmm. and certainly it is very beneficial for both uh, Eastern and Lakeland. And EIU and Lakeland, as we know, are, are uh, both uh, major employers in Coles County. Uh, and those folks, some of those folks, reside in, in Charleston and Mattoon. Uh, tough times have forced uh, both institutions to uh, relieve people of their jobs, which means they may have had to move out of Charleston and Mattoon. Um, and Brandon, a comment that you made to me uh, recently was that uh, Charleston improving itself can also help Eastern. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, we're... I, I've said this so many times since I took over as mayor. In my opinion, Charleston and EIU are together, right? We're one. And, you know, when one leg starts hurting, your other leg starts compensating. So we feel um, that we're, we're going to hold up, you know, while Eastern goes through this. We're focusing even harder than ever to continue to have the community grow and to be a bright spot so that when Eastern, you know, starts bouncing back, look at all the growth. It just gives more to bring uh, people to the area, to draw people to Charleston and, and to draw students to uh, EIU and, and even, you know, with, with the, the changes that Matt Toon's making, so. And Tim, if, you, if there's anything you can add, you also have Lakeland right there, uh, southern part of Matt Toon Lakeland Boulevard. So you have not only residents from Tra uh, Eastern Illinois University that, that work there, they, some live in Matt Toon, you also have Lakeland. So uh, what can you add to the fact that trying to maybe improve Mattoon can also help those institutions in some way. Well, I think Lakeland has added a great deal to the city of Mattoon. And of course, uh, many of those students at Lakeland will stay in the area, whether it's Mattoon, Charleston, or within the Lakeland College District. So I think that's important because those young people are getting their education there and they're going to be uh, getting into jobs that are going to be you know, relatively high paying jobs. And most importantly, they're staying in the area because we want to keep the people here. Uh, so often we hear that the students or younger people are, are leaving the area. And we don't want to see that. We want to bring them back here, keep them here. And we saw um, not too long after our last taping of, of both Charleston and Mattoon, uh, both, both you gentlemen, Brandon and Tim, uh, appeared at a, a uh, little gathering at Old Main uh, at the end of February mm -hmm. to show uh, the economic impact that uh, Eastern Illinois has on on Mattoon and Charleston oh, there. Absolutely. Yep. Very good. So from higher education, let's move over to uh, medical facilities. We have Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System located between Charleston and Mattoon on Route 16. New, ad new additions adjacent to the hospital and there's some more work being done right now. Uh, Sarah Bush obviously provides health care and jobs and when a major employer near your town, such as Sarah Bush, which is, seems almost equidistant to both towns, 
that has to make both both towns feel good about your major one of your major health providers improving itself. Well, the regional cancer center is going up, and uh, that's going to be a boon to this area as well. Okay. I mean, like I said, they, a lot of uh, citizens from both communities are employed there at Sarah Bush and travel back and forth. And, uh, you know, the Route 16 there is highly traveled. There's almost as many cars on that daily as there is on 57. So uh, I expect to see more uh, development out there in the future. Yeah, it's fantastic for a community, you know, for Charleston Mattoon to have such a uh, excellent facility right there. And with all that traffic, there is a new stoplight that's coming there on Loxa Road, and I think that's going to help out tremendously with the increased traffic. Because yeah, if you get out there on 16 in the middle of the day, sometimes I mean it is just there's a lot of cars, and then after five o'clock, it's just it's constant. So, well, I think that whole area between Mattoon and Charleston will grow. And Kyle and I were talking on the way over here. I think what stopped Mattoon from growing east was sort of a barrier was the interstate and what has kept Charleston from growing to the west were the twin bridges. But now, as I say, the businesses have jumped over those mm -hmm. two barriers. And so probably won't see it in my lifetime, but I think we'll see a time when the two communities will be growing together almost like a Champaign-Urbana or Bloomington Normal because we are moving in that, uh, that direction and I think it's a good thing. I do too. And you mentioned the Loxa Road stoplight. Uh, people may say that's, oh, another stoplight at that spot, but when, when, when might we see that stoplight? Is there any knowledge of when that might, might go up? You know, Scott? The traffic signal uh, construction's underway right now. Okay. Uh, so I know last week they poured the uh, pedestals and, and uh, over the last couple weeks uh, bored in all the, uh, uh, the uh, underground cable. Uh, I think it was probably the piping for the underground cabling. I noticed they set the uh, panel uh, pad for uh, all the traffic controls and uh, they'll be, uh, be waiting on the mast arms and all the lighting to get that installed. So that project is underway uh, as we speak. Uh, as a specific date when they're going to have the actual signals activated, I don't know the answer to that. That's all controlled by IDOT, but they are under construction uh, right now. And not only will that intersection uh, impact the hospital, but also the, the business park just to the east. And that area, I can remember 20 years ago when there was just a dirt road there, and now all of a sudden you have these different businesses. Is that an area of focus to continue to grow? It is, and I'll tell you, the folks that are in the business park are thrilled about the traffic light because it's very challenging for those folks that operate a business in the business park to be able to get out onto 16 during the day safely. Uh, you'll see a lot of folks uh, sort of sputter out into the middle there between the two, <laughs> between the four lanes, and, and there's been a number of accidents there. And so I know for them, uh, you know, Dustin Sons operates out of there. There's several, several companies that operate, Coca Cola, there's several that operate out of there. That'll make that transition out on a 16 much safer, and I think that'll make that whole business park area more attractive uh, to companies that might, might be looking at that location. Uh, for expansion or, or construction of a new of a new building or an office, uh, a warehouse, what have you. So I, I see that as a real plus uh, for the business park. All right. So positives just from that one stoplight, that that intersection, locks a road. Uh, let's move on to water and fire protection, two separate things. Uh, both towns are connected with the water connection, and how does that benefit both towns? Well, I can tell you, and I know Kyle can 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 echo these comments. Something that our, form, that our public works directors, both in Mattoon and Charleston, worked on a number of years ago uh, was that we used to joke there were a couple hydrants back in behind the water plant, and one of them was green and yellow for Mattoon green wave colors, and we had the <laughs> Charleston one that was painted red or gold or something like that. And so we used to joke about it. Maybe one was a little taller than the other, and we'd have these joint council meetings and joke about my hydrants bigger than yours or this or that or the other. And, and so, uh, you know, while we were so close, we got to thinking that, um, boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could interconnect those water supplies because we're both right there at the hospital uh, and, and use that as a, as a backup system to feed both communities in the event of some catastrophic event, maybe a tower burst or we get a water main break or, God forbid, a, some sort of a weather event, maybe a tornado. And no, the backup isn't intended for every single household in town to fire up your your shower and, and every restaurant be open and all that, but it is intended to get some water to the to the two communities and it runs either direction. 
Uh, and so the community's invested in some equipment at the, at the hospital, and now with the flip of a switch, and I'm making it sound a little easier than it really is, but Charleston can provide water to Mattoon, and Mattoon can provide water to Charleston. And I know your next question is going to be, gee, Scott, have you ever used it? And I can tell you that both communities to date have used the water interconnect. There was a time when we had a water main break, and uh, we needed to have some backup water pressure and supply from Mattoon, and I know uh, Matt Toon's had the same situation. Right. Yeah. Kyle, any examples of, of how Matt Toon's benefit, <laughs> benefited from this water connection? Well, we had uh, issues out of uh, one of the lakes, like Matt Toon, about pumping water to our treatment facility. And uh, we had struggles with the contractor to get out there and get it done. And, you know, we had plenty of water in the tank, but we were getting a little nervous. And we had asked, hey, can we open it up just to make sure? And, uh, you know, we did open up the system. Everything was fine. Um, and it just it bought us some time that you know we may or may not have needed, but it's nice to have that. So and we can rely on each other for that help, and it's it's great to be able to have that. It's really uh, really a bonus for both communities uh, for our for our fire rating as well to have that interconnect. And I can I can assure you that the folks at the hospital are happy we have it as well. Yes, I have I have heard a few things about that as well. Uh, fire protection. Uh, both towns have multiple stations. Uh, how do both towns uh, benefit from uh, the fire protections? Uh, I'll, I'll mention one thing is we have a RIT team in both Mattoon and Charleston that when they're called out to a structure fire, uh, if it's in Charleston, Mattoon's RIT team will come over and vice versa if there's a fire in Mattoon. And that you know gives us a couple different things. It gives us a better rating for our ISO. It helps the manpower issues but it's also just a backup if we've got guys in a in a building that's on you know for fire charleston's on standby in case one of our men go down that they can rush in and help and the other guys can still be fighting the fire so it's it's safety for our men it, it helps you know uh, our men focusing on the fire to get the fires put out uh, safely and, and save the surrounding areas as well well in fact this morning uh, we did have a structure fire in mattoon oh. and charleston of course came over uh, to assist, as, as Kyle said, not to really fight the fire, but to be there in the event that uh, one of our firefighters would be down in the structure. They can go in and our men can continue to fight the fire. But and, that happened just And I morning. learned at the joint council meeting that we held together that uh, lives have been saved because the fire department's working right. together. So, I mean, that's pretty, I mean, that's significant. Well, there was an incident uh, recently where uh, uh, Charleston Fire Department came over to assist in a structure fire and they were on their way back to Charleston after the fire and there was an injury uh, at one of the plants in Mattoon and it just happened that the Charleston uh, Fire Department uh, personnel were closer than we were at the time and they got there and started uh, helping the uh, person who was injured in that plant. So that's another way in which it just happened that, the, uh, that we had that assistance. So you hear stories all the time about firefighters and, and uh, everybody has a different role. It's definitely a team effort. So to have that collaborative effort between both towns benefits everyone for, mm -hmm. sure. for sure. Tim, I want to ask you about the Safe Streets program. What is it and how does it work? Well, uh, not too long ago, uh, Police Chief Jeff Branson initiated uh, what we call the Safe Streets program, uh, Safe Streets Task Force, and there are two officers dedicated from Mattoon PD, Charleston PD, uh, Coles County Sheriff's Department, EIU PD, and Coles County Probation. And on a random basis, uh, they will be together. Uh, they will go to maybe uh, locations in the two communities or in the county where maybe their crime has been more than normal or where they have heard maybe there is a gathering, a large gathering of people. Uh, they maybe go through uh, uh, an area, maybe uh, an apartment complex. Uh, they all show up at one time, a string, uh, show of force. They do not uh, answer the regular calls, but this is a specific group. And uh, it's, it's worked very well. And, the, and I'm told that some of the people in these various locations where they have gone have thanked them for doing that. And so you might, so these people are in uniform, uh, they're in marked cars. And so sometimes people may say, well, what's a Charleston police officer doing in Mattoon. They don't have any jurisdiction. Well, they do. <laughs> There's an agreement that uh, all of the uh, police officers in the county uh, have uh, rest powers within the county. So uh, it, it's been a very good program, uh, working together cooperatively. Uh, 
The Coles County Sheriff's Department now has a uh, certified reconstructionist that can work on accidents where there may be uh, injuries or maybe a death or something. And that individual, uh, Sheriff Rankin, has uh, said can be used by Charleston, Mattoon, or, or wherever. So there's a great deal of cooperation between the Mattoon, Charleston uh, Sheriff's Department and the other law enforcement agencies uh, in the county. So another team effort there with that, as well as like we mentioned with the fire protection units working together. Well, um, I know something also that okay. happens between uh, Charleston and EIU PD. Uh, on occasion, uh, the Lakeland police will come in and assist back up uh, our police when you know we really need them and they have a lot of calls. All right, very good. Uh, wanna ask you about working with other organizations or groups within the county. And if, if you want to name any of those organizations, how who do you work with and, and how does that benefit uh, one town or both towns? Well, this morning, like Mayor Gover and I were at a meeting with Coles together and then you had mentioned uh, regional. Coles regional County planning. Regional Planning. Um, so, I mean, once again, Coles County uh, collaboration, I mean, all together. Okay, very good. Any project, any attempt? I was going to say by virtue of our office, uh, we are automatically on the uh, Coles uh, together board of directors and another thing I might just mention the four of us are sitting here together uh, we meet once a month mm -hmm. uh, for lunch and we talk about uh, common problems or concerns or what's going on in Springfield or what can benefit Mattoon what can benefit Charleston and it's been a very good relationship. Well, I can tell you in the d short time that I've been mayor, it was it was great to be able to do that, to step in and, and learn. Tim's been able to, to, you know, give me some insight on some different things. So it's been a, it's been a blessing from my standpoint, learning and seeing Charleston and Matt Toon come together. We were sitting up here together um, and, you know, no punches have been thrown yet, but I will say I did hear when the water was opened up that when our water went that way, it did taste better. <laughs> now there may be some punches thrown after all. Okay, all right, all right. I just had to get that in there. Well, and Brad and I frequently, and I know Kyle and uh, uh, Scott, frequently, you know, pick up the phone and call one another. Mm -hmm. This is my next, my, I didn't even have to ask the oh. question. You guys got right into the whole communication aspect. In addition to meeting monthly, uh, once a year, and I asked you guys on your last episodes, was the once a year joint uh, city council meeting has to be such a unique atmosphere to have multiple people from both cities in one location. What is that like? Well, I can tell you, I learned a lot at the last one. Um, this was the second one that I was able to take part of since I've been on council and then one as mayor. And you, you learn just how much the two cities do work together. Uh, you hear from all the departments, the fire, um, police, public works. And, you know, I mean, th there's a lot of collaboration that goes on back and forth between the two cities, um, even on the administration levels, you know. So it's uh, there's there's a lot that goes on that people do not realize. I mean, we're, we, we joke back and forth about who's better at this or that, but ultimately we've come together as a pretty good and strong team. A lot of and, equipment. Uh, we lot meet of... at the uh, Lifespan Center once or twice a right. year, and I mentioned the four of us meet, but on a monthly basis, our department heads uh, meet as well. There's a lot of collaboration, and, and again, uh, you know, a lot of it maybe folks don't see, you know, but there's a lot of meetings between police and fire personnel. Hey, uh, both of our, all of our ambulances, I think, are fairly well outfitted, almost identically. So if there's a major scene where our crews show up, our guys can hop in the back of the Mattoon ambulance, vice versa, Mattoon, Mattoon ambulance personnel in the back of our box and pretty much operate seamlessly between the two departments and have done that on a number of uh, high profile incidents, particularly up on 57. But there's a lot of equipment sharing in the street department and the utilities department and public works. I know in the parks maintenance division, you know, our folks do a lot of work with Kurt Stretch over in Mattoon. They, you know, they've got a particular piece of equipment that maybe we both don't need, but they use it for two weeks out of the year, and then we can borrow it. So there's just really a lot of that that goes on that people may not realize. And, and along with our police departments as well. I mean, you know, criminal, crime scene investigation, there's no sense of both cities having some of the same equipment. We, we've worked together. Hey, somebody buy this piece of equipment you know, Mattoon buys this, Charleston buys that, and we can and share those. And uh, it's worked out real good. I mean, both cities have got uh, people that have been trained in that, and, and we help each other out on the major uh, Well, and here a incidents. while back, uh, pardon me, uh, a while back, uh, we had one piece of equipment rather expensive, and several of the departments, Charleston, Mattoon, EIU, UPD, and 
Sheriff's Department went together and put some of the money together and they were able to buy that one piece of equipment that individually we could not have afforded to buy. And some of the things that these things you're telling us about, like Scott said, that are kind of behind the scenes. That's why we have you gentlemen here to tell us <laughs> right. some of those examples and people have maybe a little bit different perspective of how mm -hmm. one town and or both towns work together. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Uh, my next question I kind of thought of after I invited you gentlemen here and uh, we'll see how this answer goes. <laughs> uh, over the years, uh, I'm dating myself, so about 35 years in Coles County growing up, I've always thought on those many car rides, what would Charleston Mattoon look like if it was all together, businesses, houses, could it happen and what would it take? I, I think it's not a matter of could, I think it will. Um, it, it, you know, like Tim alluded to earlier, we're already starting to see that. And as the cities, you know, um, collaborate the way we do and then the growing, I think we're gonna see them start growing together towards that area and see it come together. And once again, when, I don't know, but we're already starting to see houses built um, and they're coming towards the, the middle there between the county. And both cities recognized that early on and I think it was probably around 93, they put a corridor development committee together to review any development between that area so that way it fits in with both Mattoon and Charleston. Mattoon Charleston put the the requirements uh, in place so that we wouldn't have a residential section here, commercial section here, or, or a, a manufacturing here and, and that way it's just a planned development and you know I think we'll see that and maybe some future developments on 1000 North uh, a corridor plan like that as well. And uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but one little neat thing I found out uh, talking to you guys before this, uh, this gathering we have here is that all four of you are from Charleston or Mattoon. So you grew up in the town that you're representing. I think that's pretty neat. Is there anything that comes to mind when I, you hear that and, and you're, you have a grasp, obviously, of the town that you're representing, leading, but you also, considering Charleston, Mattoon, and the proximity, uh, you certainly kind of understand the other town. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one neat little thing there. I know from, from my perspective, uh, both Kyle and I are fairly close in age and, and uh, having grown up in Charleston and Kyle and Matt Toon, uh, you know, things started to change about the time we were, we were kind of moving through the school system. My parents are from Charleston and I'm sure Tim and probably your parents can remember some of the days back in the 60s, maybe where we didn't get along so well. Uh, and I think a lot of that centered around sports and jokingly about the hospital and its location. And there's all kinds of things that, that get thrown around in, in different, uh, different settings. But uh, I can tell you that as long as I've worked for the city, I think our personnel has got along very well with Matt Toons. And I honestly can tell you that over the last 15 to 20 years, it's been better than ever. And, and probably in the last 10 to 15, uh, better than I can ever remember in the 20-some 20, 20 years I've worked for the city. Um, there are no barriers. I mean, yes, you know, Matt Toon's located nicely along 57 and they've got a lot more of the retail than we have, uh, but we've got EIU and there's certainly some things that, that uh, businesses are going to look to locate in Charleston more so than they would in, in Matt Toon. But we all benefit. Um, you know, everybody benefits when there's a new manufacturing business. People are gonna go to Charleston schools or Mattoon schools, they're gonna shop in Charleston, they're gonna eat out in Mattoon. We all benefit. We benefit greatly from both Lakeland and the universities, uh, you know, extracurricular activities and sporting events and all things that happen on a campus like this and both communities benefit. Uh, so I can tell you that Kyle and I, we make it a point to make sure that our teams talk a lot, they work together, they share equipment, they share resources like the mayor mentioned, share pieces of equipment, buy things, be smart about those purchases, buy together when we can uh, to get our costs down. There's just a lot of things going on that I can tell you that being from Charleston, knowing the folks in Mattoon and who to call and who to reach out to, there are no barriers really, there just aren't. Oh. I'm in a u unique position in a way. Uh, my maternal great-grandparents came here before the Civil War to Mattoon, but also I spent 32 years teaching at Eastern Illinois University, so I've sort of got my foot in both Mattoon and Charleston. So I know a lot of people in Charleston because uh, I have been here for all of those years as well. And I think, I, like uh, Scott said, I've seen those barriers broken down. When I first came over here, I mean, you almost didn't want to say you were from Mattoon. 
but uh, <laughs> that's no longer the case, no. and that's wonderful. Yeah. And it, it, it is a true honor, and I say this uh, sincerely, to be able to serve this community. Um, came back here in 2006 after graduating from chiropractic school, and you know, I, people ask me, did you ever see yourself being the mayor? And I always said, maybe at 54 instead of 34, but you know, uh, we're placed in certain positions at, the, at certain times, and uh, you know, now that I've been able to do this and be able to do it in my hometown, where now I have a business, I'm raising my own children in places that uh, there has been a Combs working at the city since 1952, and so I get to carry, you know, a torch on that way. But uh, it, it, it's just, it's amazing, and then to see what's happening in Coles County, and uh, and then in, you know, me specifically in Charleston, it's just so, I don't know. There's just so much good and so much positive that's actually going on. And, uh, and we're starting to focus on that more, you know, and I, 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 that means a lot to, to me and to all of us sitting up here, you know, all this positive stuff that we get to sit up here and talk about that maybe not everyone realizes. And hopefully this show, and, and I appreciate you being able to do this, can, can bring a lot of this to light. Very good. And, and maybe with uh, some of this news with Eastern Illinois, maybe this is, and also the, all the businesses that we talked about, whether they be uh, old businesses improving or new businesses coming to the communities, there's obviously a lot of positive things moving forward. City Spotlight is on YouTube. Past episodes can be viewed on East Central Illinois towns that have been featured on City Spotlight. Just search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. Listed on your screen are the recent episodes of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.